I feel like this whole month, this whole nonfiction November month is just gonna be like a vlog about me trying to vlog. Today is Tuesday, November 12th. Uh, technically yesterday was a holiday and yet I feel like this week has already been so long. Um, so currently as of me filming this, I still have not posted my first week's vlog because as you'll see, when you watch the first vlog, which will come out after I film this, but before I post this vlog, um, as you'll see, there's just technical issues. It got to a point where I thought it was like my computer was fucking up and luckily I figured that out. But now my external hard drive that I had all of those files on and like my Premiere files saved on is just like not mounting, like I can't access it. I also had kind of like a surprise freelance project come in, so more stuff that I like need to work on. Um, I'm gonna get a haircut in like two hours, one hour, two hours, I don't know, my sense of time is off, so I gotta make sure I look that up. Um, so it's, again, it's Tuesday and it's only Tuesday, but I am very excited Part of maybe the emotional drainage is also just the whiplash. Um, I'm super excited because I got an arc of Sopandeb's mistranslation. Um, Sopandeb is a writer for the New York Times um, and he has this memoir coming out next year about like his family. Um, he's also Indian American, I'm pretty sure Bengali American. He was like not in contact with I believe his father for a very long time. Um, and so this memoir is about him reconnecting with his family and stuff like that. So um, I follow, he's a good Twitter follow. So um, when I heard about this book, I was very excited about it because I think it'll also just like kind of culturally and all of that stuff like resonate. Um, so I am super excited to have this arc. So now I feel like half of my reading plans are upended again. But the goal I set out for this month is to read not five nonfiction books. So I wouldn't say that I'm on good track. Do you ever have one of those weeks where like every day feels like it's been a week? Like this is, this week we are now at Thursday, November, what, 14th? I feel like it's been a whole month since the beginning of this week. I did start reading Mistranslations, um, so in Deb's book last night, and I'm really enjoying it so far. It's, I think I got like three or four chapters in maybe, um, and it's interesting. So the book is about him reconnecting with um, his parents, uh, and but also kind of talking a lot about family through that lens of like coming from an immigrant family, coming from a Bengali family, an Indian American family. Um, so there's like a lot of that like cultural discussion to it. It's interesting to me because the book doesn't start, I mean, there is a prologue, but like the first chapter is not like some like family setting. The first chapter is Deb talking about um, a comedy routine that he did. He's also a stand-up comic in addition to his other jobs. And he was talking about like kind of like this comedy routine he did where he's kind of like doing a lot of the like, you know, the brown person jokes um, and kind of like how that sort of like made him think more about the ways that he's related and not related to his identity. And I thought that was a really interesting thing to start on. Comedy is like a really strong element of this book, which I wasn't really expecting, um, which I think makes sense. Like now, like kind of seeing how it's developing over the course of the book. I think the comedy element of this book is kind of speaking to like a certain need for introspection, um, not just introspection, but also like publicly declaring your introspection in a way that like is not necessarily common, at least like in Indian families, when we're talking about our own dysfunction. Um, I think like just kind of like the existence of this book about talking about this aspect of Indian like life. Um, it's in, in, like in a, about Indian American life. Like when we talk about sharing our stories, like we often talk about like how we're interacting with the world around us. Figuring out how to talk about your families is harder because like family is like super important, but also it's this weird, like there's this tension of, you know, the way that our families work here are often different from the way that they seem to work in India. Um, the cultures are different. The way that families kind of exist together is different. In India, a 
lot of families will all live together. Um, like you get married, you live, like when my parents got married, my mom lived with my dad and his parents. Um, and that's like just a typical thing. You go to college from your home, like, you know, all of these things that we associate with like you leave your family um, in the US often, at least in a lot of Western cultures, I think, in India are just like, okay, now you're in another family, right? And I think for me, at least in like my experience, um, that's been a part of trying to figure out how to navigate a lot of stuff here because um, like the cultural differences between me and my parents are not just about things like, you know, what clothes am I going to wear? It's about the way that like I learn about family from them whereas how I versus like how I learn about family from my friends. There's a lot of stuff that I think I don't know, I'm speaking generally, I'm very much generalizing. Um, when you're talking to people who don't come from similar backgrounds, like a tendency to kind of like be defensive of it because you know like the way that people respond to things like arranged marriages and stuff are often rooted more just like in the fact that they don't understand the culture that makes that kind of a part of it. Um, but it also means that like there are stuff that is harder to talk about. The element of comedy to me is about like being able to talk about things that are uncomfortable, not just with yourself, but and not just like with a therapist, but with a broader audience. And so much of like comedy that we associate with like the most popular Indian American comedians or like Western Indian comedians, I'm trying to like include like Indian Canadian and stuff in there, um, are people who are talking about the cultural tensions that like are most obvious to everybody. But then this underlying family stuff is always there. So I think that that choice is interesting. in the most recent clips I've filmed for this I've been just like half collapsed. I am in Long Island right now. I am actually downstairs in my parents house um, because tomorrow, Sunday, today, whatever, um, it, my friend is getting married in Manhattan um, so I came down today via train. It took stupidly long to get here. Apparently I guess something got stuck in the route or something so like we had to take a bus for like a little bit before we get on the train and then we get to the station where we're supposed to get on the train and like theoretically this should be like a smooth connection like we should just be getting on to the train after we get off the bus instead we waited for like an hour then I get to Penn Station and I need to get on the LIRR Long Island Railroad to get to where my parents live. We can get there and basically find out that their stop is out of commission be for the weekend. So I had to wait an hour to get on a train that would take me to the end of a different line from which I could then take a connection back to my stop. The bright side though, of course, is that because of the LIRR trip that was like stupidly long, I ended up getting to read more of Mistranslations by Soap and Deb and I'm, I'm really, just really loving it. There's a lot of this reading experience that brings me back to the feeling of reading Chemistry by Waking Wing. They're very different books, like tonally very different, um, and there's a lot of things like subject-wise that are di very different. Um, chemistry, like obviously like it's about like a female character which also adds a different lens to it, but in terms of the connection between being like first-gen American and dealing with like immigrant culture and assimilation and all of that stuff related to family issues in particular and like fraught family dynamics that element is very like reading that element in this book really very much brings me back to that element in chemistry so I'm now halfway through the book so he is like this isn't like strictly a linear narrative it kind of jumps around a bit but where I'm at now he is in Kolkata for the first time I think in his life um as like a 30 year old I think um which to me is kind of crazy because like it's kind of crazy to think about if you don't know anything about Kolkata or Calcutta um it is a very intense and weird city um and for me it is like the 
only Indian city I really know. Because it's the only place in India I know, it's hard for me to gauge how weird it is. But like, I've I've heard from people who have lived in other places in India or grew up in, in them or like studied in them that like, there's something about Kolkata in particular that is strange. So I'm just like kind of tracking him going through the city for the first time and just like imagining that. Because like, even as someone who went regularly as a kid and even through like her teens um, and like the early part of my 20s, like, going regularly like it's not a city that like I've ever felt fully comfortable in and so just like imagining that like having like both like this intense like family moment um connected to this very intense city is like yeah it's it's a lot um to kind of to to like process in the book So I am back home after being in New York. I think the last time I filmed was Saturday night, most likely. Probably. Did I film Sunday night? I don't know. The thing with New York, I'm realizing now, I always go to New York because it's where my parents live thinking that like, I'm going to just go and chill and relax and it's going to be like super nice. Um, yeah, just like very relaxing because like when I usually when I go visit my parents, it's just kind of like, hey, sit back just chill with them. And the thing too is that my parents moved to Long Island while I was in college. So like I didn't grow up there. I don't have like a group of friends that I'm like every time I go to Long Island I'm like yeah let's go do our Long Island thing from like when we were kids or whatever. Um, so usually like so like in the past when I've gone to visit them it's been kind of like yeah that's where like just go home and chill sort of thing. But especially like after having lived in New York, even for just a few months, like I didn't even live there that long. Like now it's like I go back and there's just so many people that I end up meeting up with that <laughs> I'm just always moving around. But it's cool. I love going to New York. I love getting to meet up with people. I, yeah, I have fun. So I'm not mad. I just like need to remember this every time I make plans in the future. Finished Mistranslations by So Pandev and I really enjoyed it. There are some things that I've been thinking about in regards to stuff I wish it had like delved further into. There's a lot of kind of like cultural context that I don't think he fully explores and I don't entirely fault him for that either. I think this is like really much more of a personal memoir than like a full kind of like anthropological study. I am really excited about this book coming out. Like I think it's a really like important part of the Indian American, Bengali American conversation. Maybe it's feeling important to me because like I'm at a similar point in my life in terms of considering like I don't know like where I am now in relation to like how I was raised. I've just been thinking about it in terms of like conversations that I've had with friends um, specifically about just things that we've thought about in, in along those lines. So I'm excited to see this book come out and to hear people talk about it. I actually met up with Sopan Deb while I was in New York last week and got to chat a little bit about like the writing and the publishing process. And it was really interesting getting to learn from like his experience of working on this book. And maybe more broadly, a thing I think like it made me think about just in general is like how I met like this, or not just me, like a lot of us are in this weird place where we're now meeting people that we've like, met through the internet or like getting to know people that you've met online. Um, this has happened me, with me more because of booktube now where like there are people who I've met through YouTube who then I, I meet at like booknet fest. And it's so weird, right? Like if you've been to booknet fest or if you've been to similar kind of events, had like a similar experience, you know that like everyone starts out sort of like eyeing each other, kind of going like, eh, like I've, I've seen you, right? There's also this other element of like, if you've been watching someone's videos, you get to know certain parts of their life, you get to know parts of their personality. And there's like that reciprocity of like, they've maybe watched some of yours and they've gotten to know parts of your life and everything, but you're never quite sure like what parts they know that you know about them and then vice versa. Like, so I'll like be talking to people and I'll be like, 
wait, should I like reiterate my life history? Because I've talked about this in videos, but I don't want to assume that they've like watched all these videos, but I also don't want to like repeat something that they're going to find boring. In this case, it was like interesting because I was reading this book that was like fully laying bare this whole family history, like a very personal part of his life. And then I was like, hey, <laughs> nice to meet you. So that is officially the first book that I finished for nonfiction November um, because I actually have like not picked up The Tangled Tree in like maybe one and a half weeks. So that is going great. That is not anything negative about the book, by the way. Like I think it is still a pretty good book. I have just, I don't know, <laughs> like it's been a weird couple of weeks, but I did decide to start reading Catch and Kill by Ronan Farrow because I know that it's like a more fast paced, almost thrillery kind of nonfiction book since it's about his investigation into Harvey Weinstein. I will say, I find the beginning of it very jumpy, like it jumps around a lot in a way that I don't quite like. For me, like at least in the first maybe 40, 50 pages, it's just so jumpy that even though like I know what, what hints he's laying down, I know what connections he's like planning to build, I, I find it a little bit distracting. Like I kind of wish, I don't need it to be a linear narrative, but I want some like a little bit smoother transition, I guess, to like gear back to like what I'm enjoying about the book right now. I will say like there are things in this book where I'm just like, what the fuck, right? There's the, um, the Italian model who had actually recorded on tape Harvey Weinstein confessing that he groped her. It, this book goes into more detail about how she like, basically had this incredible presence of mind through not just like that process, but also like later when she was being intimidated into signing the NDA, which she did, she still had the this incredible presence of mind to be able to send herself a copy of the tape that the lawyers wouldn't be able to find. I freeze up like when someone says something like mildly snarky to me, right? Like she is in the situation, she was in the situation where like Harvey Weinstein already an intimidating person and his lawyers who are also clearly paid very well to be super intimidating are going at her with this NDA and she's still like so resourceful that she is able to create a backup copy. It's both impressive and so frustrating that she needs to be resourceful in that way. Like imagine like someone who has that resourcefulness who doesn't have to have their time wasted by assholes like Harvey Weinstein. It is November 26th, which means in two days, it's going to be Thanksgiving. Um, my husband has been out of town. Um, he's coming back tomorrow. My parents are also coming in tomorrow, which means that the responsibility of buying all the groceries for Thanksgiving and also cleaning the house is on me. And I have been doing a great job. Um, I stayed up until midnight last night to get ahead on catch and kill because I'm gonna finish it. Like that, I'm gonna finish tonight. Like that is my goal. I am at the point where, spoiler alert, Ronan Farrow publishes his impactful article about Harvey Weinstein um, and the sexual assaults he's committed. A thing I'm realizing though is that I really wish that this book had more of a sense of time to it. It's not always clear to me how much time has elapsed between like the different events of the book. And I think like if every chapter had like at least kind of noted either maybe like a date um, or maybe like number of days until the New Yorker article um, or maybe and then like now that the article's done like maybe days since um, I think that would help a lot just because there's so much happening similarly like this this book needs like a guide to like who everyone is like like when you're reading a fantasy book and they just have those lists of people like in the beginning this book kind of needs that it's not a fantasy book obviously but like there's there's so many people to keep track of who like and, and a lot of those people have sort of like overlapping jobs and stuff so it's like not always clear who is whose. Um, something I forgot to mention when I was in New York, um, I finished reading Mistranslations, but <laughs> because I was dealing with the Long Island Railroad trip that was like twice as long as what it should have been, I had more time. So I also finished reading the arc for The Worst Best Man by Mia Souza, which is a romance novel that's coming out next year, I believe. This arc was, was basically the reason why I started an Adelweiss account because I like read the, the summary and I was like, ooh, 
very much up my alley. Um, basically, the main character is a wedding planner. Um, she was all set to get married and then her fiance dumped her the night before her wedding. Um, because of something, some serious thing that his brother said. Now, years later, she is still wedding planning and she's really good at her job. She has this opportunity to become an event planner um, for a super ritzy hotel line. Um, but to do that, she has to team up with that brother who convinced her fiance to dump her right before she got married. The main characters are just like, there's so much to them that I really, really loved. Um, and then the heroine, she's Brazilian, so there's like a lot of like celebration of her culture, of her family, like a lot of great descriptions of food. There's also like a brilliant use of like the one bed in a hotel room situation because the one bed in a hotel room ends up being attached to couples counseling camp or whatever. But once it started getting to the point where like the two characters are really like engaged with each other, like physically and emotionally. The the way that that kind of took place and the way that it like the tension between them, which is like not just about like this, this one specific story, but like really a lot of different factors. The way that that tension like somehow um, like just kind of immediately stopped felt really abrupt and just didn't feel quite right and that's where like my interest in the book really kind of took a nosedive like I was like fully consumed by the book when I was reading the first half like you know turning every page well it was my kindle so just scrolling through every page and then as soon as they got together the way that that tension just dropped or really just any sense of tension at all just like kind of left like there's still like a lingering sense of like oh no they're not supposed to do this but like even though they know that like academically the book doesn't like seem to to manifest that tension in a real way um until like it remembers like towards the end like oh wait this is a romance novel we need to give away for these people to fully prove their love for each other it wasn't quite perfect for me but i thought it was a lot of cute fun um and i always love like a super competent heroine so that was a lot of fun. That's my one nonfiction book so far for the month. I mean, it's a week left, less than a week left. Crap, November's almost over. 2019 is almost over. one day left to accomplish my goal of reading five books um, this month, uh, five nonfiction books. So um, yesterday I read Everybody Yoga by Jessamyn Ward. Um, so this is a book about yoga, as you might be able to tell from the title. Um, it's basically an introduction for people who are interested in getting into yoga. I decided to read this book like maybe like three days ago. Um, I'm like kind of trying to get a little bit more concerted focused maybe about yoga but that's also tough I'm a brown girl I'm Indian sometimes stuff in yoga classes very much rubs me the wrong way sometimes the way people say things the music they choose um, even just like down to the designs that yoga companies will put on mats but I've been wanting to read more and find good places to read so I, I figured the right person to turn to would be Jocelyn from Yogi with a Book whose channel I recently discovered thanks to BookNet Fest and um, we were on a panel together and she's super awesome super nice and super smart um, and she's like I love the way that she talks about books and things in general. Um, so I went looking through her videos and found like her yoga playlist, um, which has like a video about, yeah, books to, to like get into yoga basically. Um, and she had recommended this book, Everybody Yoga, and I gave it a look and it was very good. This book was a lot, laid out a lot more of the basics of like what the different aspects of yoga are, what kind of some of its modern history is um, that shapes the way that yoga is done today. Um, so I really appreciated it. I, it's a really nice, easy book to read. It's on Kindle Unlimited, so if you have that, you can read it for free. So that's what I read yesterday. So now I only have to read two more books. So I made good progress on The Tangled Tree. I have less than 100 pages left to go, so I think I can do that. And my other goal is to finish She Said,
I finished The Tangled Tree, which means that of my five book goal, I reached four books. I am, I'm gonna take it, I'm gonna, I'm, I'm happy with it. Books are books, and I read some really good ones this month, and The Tangled Tree in particular was a really good one for me to read um, for a lot of reasons, both just like my own personal curiosity and also like work-related stuff. Um, I think that's the microwave. I'm, I'm, I really enjoyed the book. There are little things about it that are like sort of like picking on my nerves. Um, and I'm probably gonna talk about that in a review. It's a thing that I feel weird criticizing because I feel weird as this like little baby science writer um, whose background is mostly from the scientist side and like scientists are like notoriously irritable about a lot of science writing and and like the thing I've realized like as I've made this career is like some of those things like that we get irritated about on the science side like exist for a reason. Books are not the same thing as like a peer-reviewed journal article like there are things that they can do that we can't do in academic writing and things that we can do in academic writing that they can't do and so doing these criticisms feels weird for like where I'm at in my career Career, especially because David Quammen is a very established well-known science writer and like who the fuck am I to be like I don't like this little thing that you do in your books. Um, it's weird because like there's a lot of things in writing that I'm often critical about in the books that I read. I think a lot of my reviews are like focused on like structure or writing style type things just because those are things that I like tend to fixate on sometimes to the detriment of my own reading. It feels less weird for me to do that in like genres that I'm not like writing in currently. And like while I've definitely done the thing where I've entertained thoughts of like it would be fun to write a romance novel, I'm currently not writing one or like marketing one so I don't feel as weird about it as I do like as someone who is writing about science. Um, and I'm not you know writing a 300 plus page book. Um, but yeah there are things that I like have feelings about that are related to the thing that I do in my day job. Like <laughs> I'm teasing a lot of those things here because I'm like still figuring out how I want to like talk about it and parse through it um, and this is more just about the feeling side but, I'm, I, but I decided like it's still worth getting into partially because I feel like part of the fun of having a booktube channel um, versus like being like a professional book reviewer is you get to like overlay a lot of your own like I don't know personal shit onto what you're reading. And so for me, part of the personal shit of reading this book is thinking about how I want to approach science writing on my own. And so like there are things David Quammen does that I like I really respect and admire and I think this book overall is a very very good book. I, I think it's kind of an important book in terms of like distilling a lot of very complicated concepts about something that is so fundamental to our lives and that a lot of us sometimes take for granted like we know Darwin, natural selection, mutations, like these kinds of things um, but evolution is so much more complicated than that and so I respect a lot of what the book is doing and I, I respect how like the book is doing it. Um, there are just like these little minor things that like yeah that stand out to me and that I want to think about in terms of like both how I read science writing, how I think about science writing overall, like how people are doing it, and in terms of what things I want to take from this book when I'm thinking about my own science writing. So I hope that makes sense. Happy December. My goal is to finally actually start editing these vlogs. So if you're watching this, that means that I finally edited this vlog and now it's ending. So thank you guys for watching and tracking along with this vlog. I'm guessing that I probably split it up into two, three parts. Um, I have no idea. Whatever. Happy December. Happy end of year. I hope you guys had a good nonfiction reading month. I'm excited to see what everyone read this month. I'm excited for everyone's wrap-ups because, you know, what we all need is to make our, our TVRs longer and harder to get through.